Okay, so I was losing sleep last night after one of my students pointed out to me that there's an easier way to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. I thought and thought about it and I realized I haven't taught you, my students, how to do it the easy way. Now as I evaluate that personally, I think that is a terrible omission on my part. Nevertheless, I'm going to correct it right now. So in my previous lecture from chapter 5, I talked about how to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction, delta H reaction, using a semi-complicated process. In this video, which I'm making as an addendum, that is, an addition to my original chapter 5 lecture videos, I'll show you a much shorter and simpler way of doing the exact same thing. So here's the long way that I delineated in my earlier chapter 5 lecture video on the subject. Step 1, write out a chemical equation describing the formation of each component in your overall target reaction. 2, make sure that all the chemical reactions you've written out in your step 1 add up to give you the overall target reaction you've been given in the problem. If needed, multiply individual steps by coefficients. 3. Use Appendix C to write out the individual enthalpy values of formation, delta HF, for each equation in your step 1. If the equations are written backwards, then change the sign to the delta HF. If you've added coefficients to individual equations, then you have to multiply their individual delta HF numbers by those coefficients. And 4. Add up all the delta HF values from your reactions to obtain your final delta H for the total reaction. So by way of reminder, I'm now going to show you some footage from one of my earlier Chapter 5 videos in which I go through the long way of calculating the enthalpy of a reaction. Now you're welcome to skip this section of the video if you already have it fresh on your mind. My purpose of putting it in here is so that you guys can see the long way and then contrast it with the short way that I'll show you immediately afterward. So here's that lecture footage. Okay, so now that we've got that down, let's see if we can apply this process to some more difficult problems. Using our values from Appendix C, calculate the standard enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. Let's start with the first one. Two moles of sulfur dioxide combining with one mole of O2 to form two moles of sulfur trioxide. As you'll note from the steps delineated in our earlier slide, we first want to show an equation for each individual product and reactant that indicates how it is formed from its parent elements. Beginning with SO3, shown on the product side of our reaction, we'll note looking up in Appendix C that when SO3 is formed from its parent elements, sulfur, and O2, it gives us an overall delta H of formation of negative 395.2 kilojoules. Now keeping in mind that there is a 2 in front of our SO3 in this balanced chemical equation, we're going to multiply all of the coefficients given in the original equation in appendix C by 2, thus giving us this overall chemical reaction. The total delta H also has to be multiplied by 2. Now let's move to our next component, SO2. As you'll note from Appendix C, we can find this equation, solid sulfur and O2 gas combining to form SO2 with a delta H of negative 296.9. You'll note that the SO2 shown in our target reaction up here has a 2 in front of it. Hence, we have to multiply this entire equation by 2 and the final delta H by 2. You'll also note that the SO2 up in our target reaction is on the left side of the equation not the right side of the equation. As a result, we have to take this overall expression and have everything change sides like this. Thus, if I took two SO2 molecules and had them decompose into its parent elements, the overall delta H would be the same as the reverse reaction except that it switches signs from negative 296.9 to positive 296.9. You'll note that our target reaction also has this reactant, O2 gas. However, O2 gas is oxygen already in its parent elemental state. The delta H of formation of any substance in its elemental state is zero. So we don't have to worry about coming up with an equation for the O2. What we do now is we add up the two equations that we have, this one shown up here at the top, 
and this one shown here at the bottom. When we do that, you'll see that we get the overall expression shown here. I have two sulfurs and three O2s up here on the left side of the equation, adding with two SO2s down here to give me an overall left side of my final equation. I have two SO3s, two S's, and two O2s on my right side of the equation. You'll note that the two sulfurs cancel out from the left and right side of the equations because they are the same. You'll also note that in order to obtain an overall delta H for this process, I have to add up the individual delta H's for these two steps. Delta H for the first step is 2 times negative 395.2, and for the second step is 2 times positive 296.9. When I add all of that up, I get a final equation matching the original target one we were trying to obtain and an overall delta H for this process of negative 197 kilojoules. Let's take a look at the second reaction. Starting left to right, you'll notice that the first reactant I need to focus on is N2O4, dinitrogen tetroxide. As I look up that compound being formed from its parent elements in Appendix C, I can find this equation having a delta H of positive 9.66 kilojoules. You'll also note that the coefficient in our target equation up top is 1 in front of the N2O4, and is also 1 in front of the N2O4 in the equation from Appendix C. Hence, I do not have to multiply this equation or its contingent enthalpy value by any number. One thing you'll notice, however, is that N2O4 in our target equation is on the left side of the equation, in the equation we looked up in Appendix C, it's on the right side of the equation. I have to reverse that. That's done as shown here, where I now have put N2O4 on the left side of the equation and its parent elements on the right side of the equation. The corresponding sign of the enthalpy value changes from positive to negative. Now that we've dealt with N2O4, we need to consider the rest of the reactant and products in this equation. Hydrogen gas is already in its elemental form, thus its enthalpy of formation value is zero. Nitrogen gas is as well. So now I just have to focus on the formation of gaseous water. So as I look up the formation of gaseous water, you'll note that Appendix C gives me this equation. H2 plus 1 half O2 forming H2O gas. Because there's a coefficient 4 in front of the H2O gas on my product side, I have to multiply the entire equation by 4. The accompanying enthalpy value, negative 241.82, also has to be multiplied by 4. Now all I do is add up equations 1 and 2, which will give me this overall equation. N2O4 plus 4H2 plus 2O2 gives me N2 plus 2O2 plus 4H2O. The overall enthalpy values for these two equations, 1 and 2, are also added up, and I end up getting the final target equation that I wanted, and a final enthalpy value for this whole reaction of negative 977 kilojoules. So now that you've seen that lecture footage, I'm going to show you guys the short way. Here are the steps for the short way. 1. Look at the overall equation you're trying to get to. 2. Use Appendix C from the back of our text to find the enthalpy values of formation, or delta HFs, for each component in the overall equation you're trying to get to. And three, calculate the overall enthalpy of reaction, delta H reaction, by using the, the following equation from our book. The overall enthalpy of reaction is equal to the sum of the individual enthalpies of formation for the products minus the sum of the individual enthalpies of formation of the reactants. Each of these individual components we multiply by their respective coefficients. Now if you don't understand all this, don't worry. I'll show you how to do it now. So here are the same examples that I just showed you earlier using the long way, now done using the easy way. First example. Two moles of SO2 gas combining with one mole of O2 gas to form two moles of SO3 gas. How in the world do we do this using the short way? Well, we remember the equation that I showed before, of course, that the overall enthalpy for this reaction is equal to the sum of the individual enthalpy of formation of the products minus the sum of the individual enthalpies of formation of the reactants each multiplied by their respective coefficients n and m. So here's what that looks like. As I examine this equation, 
I'll notice that SO3 gas, my product, in the appendix has a delta H of formation of negative 395.2 kilojoules per mole. I also note that SO2, one of my reactants, has a delta H of formation of negative 296.9 kilojoules per mole. Now O2 gas, because it's in its elemental state, has a delta H of formation of 0. So keep these two numbers in mind as we move on to the next slide. To calculate the overall enthalpy of this reaction, the shorthand way, all I have to do is take the enthalpies of formation of my products and subtract from them the enthalpies of formation of my reactants. Remember, in the appendix picture that I just showed you, the enthalpy of formation of SO3 in my product was negative 395.2. Now because there is a 2 coefficient in front of the SO3, I have to multiply this by 2. That's what this N right here represents. This is the overall enthalpy of formation of my product. I now subtract from it the enthalpy of formation of my reactants. I just showed in the previous slide that the enthalpy of formation of SO2 is negative 296.9. I have to multiply that by 2 because there is a 2 coefficient in front of the SO2. So I subtract this overall value in the enthalpy of formation of my reactants from my enthalpy of formation of my products. The final answer ends up being negative 196.6 kilojoules. Now compare this final answer to the one that we obtained using the long way you'll see that it's exactly the same. So here's this equation. How in the world do I calculate the overall enthalpy of this reaction using the short way? Once again, I remember this equation from our book. I have to calculate out the overall enthalpies of formations of my products and then subtract from them the overall enthalpies of formation of my reactants. Here's the table from our book. You'll note that the overall enthalpy of formation of my product, H2O gas, is negative 241.82 kilojoules per mole. Do not get that confused with the enthalpy of formation of H2O liquid, which is negative 285.83 kilojoules per mole, because those two things are different. N2 gas, that is nitrogen gas, is in its elemental state, so its enthalpy of formation is zero. The same thing can be said of this reactant H2, or hydrogen gas. So all I need to do now is determine the overall enthalpy of formation of N2O4 gas. We can also obtain that from Appendix 3. As you'll note looking down here, the enthalpy of formation of N2O4 gas is positive 9.66 kilojoules per mole. Now I just throw everything into the equation. I'll begin with the enthalpies of formation of my products, that is, gaseous water, which is negative 241.82. I, of course, have to multiply this by a 4 because there is a 4 coefficient in front of the H2O in the balanced chemical equation. I now subtract from it the overall enthalpies of formation of my reactants. The enthalpy of formation of H2 is 0. The enthalpy of formation of N2O4, as we just looked up, is positive 9.66. I have to multiply that by 1 because there is a 1 coefficient in front of the N2O4 in the balanced chemical equation. So I'm subtracting the combined enthalpies of formation of my reactants from the combined enthalpies of formation of my products. You'll see that when I throw that into my calculator, the final answer comes out as being negative 976.94 kilojoules. You'll note that this number is the same as the one we calculated using the long way. Well, I hope that helps you guys out being able to calculate these in a much more easy and efficient fashion. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.